she was obviously probably the most popular star in the world in 1923. She was also a very smart businesswoman and years before had formed her own production company, which she folded into uh, United Artists, which was the distribution company she formed with uh, Douglas Fairbanks, D.W. Griffith. Was it Bill Hart? I can't remember who the third person was now. Chaplin, Chaplin of course, right. So she was going to produce her own films, which she'd been doing very successfully. And at some point, uh, she got a little bit more ambitious. And this is around the time when the German cinema was really emerging out of World War I. And the most famous director to come out of the German cinema in those years was Ernst Lubitsch, whose specialty were these big-scale historical epics, Madame du Barry, uh, Montmartre, uh, big, 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 because they were able to get very cheap extras because of the inflation situation in Germany. But he also happened to be a very brilliant filmmaker. Uh, made a star out of a woman named Paula Negri, who was hired by Paramount around the same time. And uh, Mary decided she wanted a little taste of that. So she decided to bring over Ernst Lubitsch, which was a pretty big deal. They debated for months and months about what film they were going to do. And Lubitsch was trying to push her out of her comfort zone. She mostly displayed children, teenagers. She's well into her you know, late 20s, 30s by this point, but she was holding on to this kind of childish image. Uh, first, he wanted to do an adaptation of Faust, in which she would play Marguerite. That seemed a little bit too ambitious. And they eventually settled on this, this property, which is a 19th century novel, almost completely unknown. Um, I just say, Lubitsch developed the project. Uh, the filming seemed to go just fine. Um, the, the film, when it was finally released, got very, very good reviews. Uh, a lot of people praising Mary for taking the chance or not playing a child anymore. And, and then uh, something happened. Uh, I think you know Mary's mother, who was very controlling, or she got neurotic about it, but she decided this movie was actually very bad, which, as you'll see, it is not. Uh, I think it was her problem with, she felt exposed. She didn't want to play like adults. She had real issues with that. So she allowed this film to completely disintegrate. She did not take care of the negative at all. She saved one reel where there's a comedy bit that you'll see here, where she's kind of circling a bowl of fruit, which is very, very cute, very funny and let the rest of the film just turn to dust, turn to that muck that we were seeing in the presentation earlier on. Um, so this was a legendary film for years and years. No one had seen it, completely vanished. And in the 1970s, a print turned up in the Russian film archive, Goss Film Old Fund. So uh, Eileen Bowser, who was running MoMA's film library at that point, arranged to get a hold of this thing. We imported it. And uh, it turns out to be like a Soviet dupe, illegal pirate version that was made of the film in the 20s to be shown in, in Soviet Russia uh, with Russian intertitles. Uh, it seems like most of the movie is there, but as you'll see, it, very damaged, very dupey, uh, lots of issues. So for years, it just kind of was a novelty. Like, what can we do with this? It's just too, too much work. It's not going to turn out right. And then when digital technology finally came along, there was a chance to really address some of the problems with this print. So as you'll see, you know, using the techniques we saw this morning, we were able to bring back the image you know, pretty, pretty well. We added in uh, the original tinting. And we recreated a color sequence that you'll see that was you know, hand-colored at the time Although in this version, it's a computer recreation. Um, what we didn't have was uh, the screenplay, the English language screenplay. This was a real problem, because uh, you want to get those intertitles correct. We spent a lot of time just researching, finding like one line of dialogue to be quoted in a review, you know, in an Australian trade paper. You go, great, we got that, you know, use this. 
eventually, you got, I'd say, about 60%, 70% of the dialogue back, but we didn't have the rest of it, so guess who got to write it? Uh, <laughs> Those, uh, those intertitles are identified by a little MoMA in the corner, which they are not original. It's my best guess as to what would have fit in there. So you can blame me for that when, uh, when I see you later. Anyway, I think this film is really very underrated. It's, we had a wonderful premiere, actually, at the Venice Film Festival. What was that, five years ago, I think, already? Uh, commissioned the original score to have it recreated by a, uh, an orchestra. So what you're going to hear is the performance from the pre-opening of the Venice Film Festival 2016? No, 19, 18 or 19. So pretend you're in Venice and enjoy this wonderful film. <laughs> and uh, many thanks to Julia for bringing it out here.